Mark Tassler at Houston Speedway on Sunday night, July 13th, and we're getting set for race time. And we've got sprint cars lined up here all the way down. You can just see the front ends of these sprint cars and teams getting things ready for action. The number 13 car, and yes, that's Mark Dobmeyer. We're going to be talking to him here in just a moment. He has been very sensational, to put it lightly, here at Houston's in the area tracks. Mark, I finally catch up with you. You've been red hot here around the racetracks, around the area for weeks. We have been. We've, uh, you know, we've been strong all year long. But it seems like the last month or so, we really hit a stride and uh, found some, found a little extra speed here and there, and uh, been able to uh, take advantage of it. We did have a few couple bad runs, but uh, I'd say that big outlaw run we had kind of made up for everything that was going on before. All right. Well, sorry, folks, it's taken me so long to get to Mark Dobmeyer because I want to talk about the race from July 2nd, and that's uh, some 11 days ago. <laughs> But I'm uh, finally uh, finding time where Mark's got time and I got time to talk about this. Let's go back to that race. It's uh, still being talked about. Early out, you were battling with Sammy Swindell. Did you think that uh, he was going to be uh, uh, an issue to get around him for good? Uh, to be honest, you know, we started that race and uh, we, we had a good qualifying spot and everything. Couldn't, w couldn't come up to win the heat race, so we had to start 10th in the feature, which uh, seems a long ways back. But a couple laps into that race, I knew I had a good car. I knew I could... Uh, capitalize on it make the best of it and uh, we, we use that car for everything it was worth and then I think a little bit extra and uh, as I was passing them cars I mean I, the, the names I was going by I don't really pay attention to the names and who they are but but as I'm going by I mean there was just one car after another and I knew we had good speed I knew we had a shot at it and uh, I knew Sammy had started on the on the front row so I figured he was a guy out leading and when I when I got up to him I, I caught him so fast he really it really didn't even enter in my mind that that I wasn't gonna get around him I was just I made up my mind part way through that race we're going for it win or lose you know Early in that race, the fans got their money's worth watching you and Sammy go back and forth, and then it was quite obvious you went past him. After you guys had been going back and forth, you went past him for good at that point. Then it got to be an issue going through lap traffic, and, and you got the best in the world out there. What was going through your mind at that point? Well, the, the pass for the lead, first of all, was probably the, the, uh, the that was the pass that kind of made her break, made her, you know, just made the race for me. I was uh, coming up on, we were coming up on some lap cars. Sammy took the bottom, and I, I whipped her on the top of one or two, and as we're coming down the back stretch, we ended up splitting a lap car, and uh, he went underneath him. And when he did that, he kind of spooked the guy, and he he kind of came up the track. And it's right as the time I had a big runner on the outside and was scooting her on the outside. Well, he came up, and I actually wedged it between the wall and him, and I bent both right rear and left rear rims as as, as I passed him. And uh, but I, I stayed in the gas, and it was enough to shoot by and, and take over the lead. And that's kind of the that's kind of the race that, or the the part in the race that changed the momentum, and then. Uh, got it going I mean extremely strong after that so latter part of the race the fans were watching Donnie shots close in was uh, <laughs> he on your mind at all uh, I, I knew somebody was gonna be closing in because you know as the race went on the, the rubber kind of started coming down and all of a sudden the lap cars started getting faster that's when I knew the rubber was coming down so I I raced here enough where I, I used my experience to uh, get down to the bottom and hunker down and try uh, try to protect that bottom groove when that rubber showed up and uh, for some reason, I couldn't hold the bottom coming out of two, and I knew I was slipping up off it every time. And I tried several different things, but I could not get my car to stick the bottom out of two. And uh, was your tire going away? Did you burn the tire off? I, I was. I might have been a little hard on that tire throughout the race, and uh, I, I knew it was getting it was getting down to the end. But there's still a little bit of tread left at the end of the race, and uh, I just couldn't stick two, and that's the part I was worried about. And then uh, on the last lap, sure enough, I, I slid off it a little bit, and I saw a nose wing down down below me. I didn't know who it was. Apparently, it was Donnie, and. Uh, I'd, I'd worked so hard in that race, I wasn't going to give it up, and I just stood on the gas and cranked her hard left going into three, and was able to get around the front of him and and uh, pinch it off to keep him behind me. So keep in mind, it wasn't that Donnie was catching you; you passed him early in the race. He was just <laughs> catching back up to you. Perhaps your tire was uh, uh, of lesser quality than his yeah. and others, but uh, why was yours gone? You drove the Dickens out of the car. You burned it off. <laughs> yeah, we, we were pretty tough on it, like I said earlier in the race, but. Uh, you know, I knew I had to make my moves right away because if that rubber does come down, it's a one-lane racetrack and you're not going to pass anybody. So I knew going into that race, I had to make all my moves right away in that race, and that's that's exactly what we did. And, you know, Donnie, in his interview after, he pretty much explained it right on the button, you know, that he was a little bit too conservative at the beginning, and that's where I took my chances, and it, it paid off for me. But it was a, it's a choice that, I mean, he runs races, he's a smart guy, and it, it could have worked in his favor, too, if the rubber laid down a little bit quicker. But uh, Capacity crowd, World of Outlaws here at Houston <laughs> Speedway on that night, July 2nd. You got out, the crowd exploded. They were all in uh, favor of that race. I would say, and I'll say this myself after going to the races for 46 years personally myself, 
you would have to go to a thousand races to see one that good. The crowd erupted. They loved it. What, how do you feel about that? I tell you what, that's that's the whole reason why I race sprint cars is just for, for the excitement, especially when the crowd gets into it. I get into it just as much. And uh, I think that restart where I was starting fourth, I believe, at the time, as we're parading around, I mean, I could actually hear the crowd and the electricity in this place as, as I was on the yellow flag above the motors and everything. And I think that just gives you a little extra incentive or a little extra boost going into that going into that restart to get a good start and get going right away. Week and a half after that event they're still talking about it. I'm hearing all kinds of stuff. Everywhere I go people want to talk to me about racing. Grocery stores, radio <laughs> station, whatever. Uh, I've talked to hundreds of people about that race since then. Uh, it's come up. They say uh, Mark Dobmeyer uh, is, is, proves that he's no fluke. Uh, maybe some people thought he was winning out here at Houston's five-time defending champion, winning all those features, maybe had better equipment. Well, you're up against guys that had the best equipment in the world, perhaps better than yours, and you beat them. And they said, now it proves he's no fluke. Oh, exactly. And then, you know, a couple of years ago, we picked up that outlaw show here, and we started off the front row. And, uh, I mean, any time you win an outlaw show, it don't matter where you start, you, you earned it at the end of the day. And, uh, you know, some people said, ah, he started out the front row, whatever, but I think we proved that we can do it with this last one starting from 10th. So. For those of you watching this, you may know this, you may not. I will state it. That's not the first World of Outlaws show that this man has won. He's won three of them. Two of them have been here at this track. Others have told me that Mark Dobmeyer is driving more aggressive today than he was in the past. What's your reaction to that? Uh, my reaction would be, it's, I, I think I've driven aggressive ever since day one. I, I'll race everybody as hard as I possibly can and as clean as I possibly can. And uh, I think, I mean, if I've, I've wrecked cars right when I started, I, 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 my, my take on it is you gotta wreck one car a year or you ain't driving hard enough. And uh, I've been aggressive my, my whole racing career. And uh, I think maybe we just got a little bit better better car now to get to get up a little bit. You know, our setups have been a little bit better. We've been dialing everything in a little better. And so it's it's put me into that point where they notice you a little bit more when you when you get up to the front. Hard to ca uh, take your eyes off the number 13 car. A lot of action a few weeks back, a wheelie coming out of turn four. <laughs> Uh, made contact on the front straightaway and then into the inside wall, banged up the front of your car, tore it up, you went pit side. Another night, engine blew up, you went into a ball of fire. A few nights later, you went in a World of Outlaw <laughs> race, you came back the next night and beat the winningest driver at this track, Terry McCarl, in a feature race. Hard to take your eyes off Mark Dobmeyer in the number 13. And we're looking at the number 13 car. This is the one that everybody's been talking about in Outlaw Sprint Racing here for the past few weeks. Always a car to watch on the racetrack. For Racing, I'm Mark Dassler.